All right, so this section is 4.3, which is modeling linear trends. So we're continuing on in the regression chapter. Uh, so we have this section and then one more section left for four, right? Uh, so in this section, we'll be able to use, we want to be able to use technology to write regression lines um, and then also be able to use regression line to make appropriate predictions, right? So before we get started um, with this, I wanted to show, show you uh, this slide, um, which is, we, I named the, this the least squares line, right? Um, so I just want to point out to you that you may see these terms um, used interchangeably, right? We can call this the least squares line. We can call this the regression line. We can call it the line of best fit. Um, sometimes it's also called the linear trend line, right? Or I guess simply just the trend line, right? So all of these are meaning the same thing, right? So if you use, hear these different terms, so if you hear me say um, these different terms, we're talking about the same thing, right? Oops. Hang on here a moment. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so I have here, um, it says the line we fit to the data will be such that the sum of the squares distances from the line to the data will be minimized, right? So remember what we're looking at is if I have a scatter plot, right? And I fit a linear trend line to this, right? So let's say my line looks, whoops, sorry about that, didn't turn out. Let me try that again, right? So let's say my linear trend line looks something like this, right? Then um, what we what we look at is this. Remember, I showed you this point is going to have some x y, right? So if I follow this all the way down, right? Here, so let's say this is x equals I don't know ten, right? Some x some x value. So what we can do is look at the point. Excuse me. Look at the point that's on the red line on the linear trend line, and actually look at my data point, right? So this is called the um, the observed value, and down here this is called the predicted value, right? So for x equals ten, whatever my data may be, um, th this this data point up here, this is what was actually observed, and then on the line, this is what our linear regression model predicted, right? So we call that the um, predicted. So the di difference in between these. Um, is called the residual, right? Residual. So the residual is equal to your observed y value minus the uh, predicted, right? So what we're doing is looking for the distance in between, right? So I want to know what's the distance in between, and if this distance is positive, right? That means my observed value is higher than what we predicted. And if it's negative, that means my observed value is lower than what I predicted. <clears throat> right? So we keep it in this order. Right? So basically what we're trying to do is minimize the square of these distances. Right? And and I just wanted to show you um, you know, that these so we're gonna be using technology to find these equations. I'm not gonna expect you to do this by hand, right? As I showed you last time, like how the R value is calculated, you know, that equation, you know, you not not something you have to have to work with, but I just want to show you that that there isn't just some magic that the computer's doing. We can also do this by hand. It's just the computer's more practical and, and easier to work with, right? Because typically, like I told you, we have lots and lots of data, so trying to do this all by hand um, would be nuts, right? Um, but but it can be done, right? Everything we can do with a computer, we we can do without a computer. It's just the computer makes it um, a faster, more efficient process, right? So. This is one way the re regression line is, is often shown, right? So in your textbook, um, I th they, they just say y equals mx plus b, right? Slope intercept form, that's perfectly fine. Um, but typically with regression, we, we use uh, y hat to be my, um, <clears throat> my dependent variable, right? Instead of y. And I use uh, b1 for the slope. 
and x is my independent variable, and then uh, b sub 0 is my y-intercept, right? So these just mean the same thing interchangeably, right? So and we'll need this for the next slide, right? Because this y hat, this is telling me that this is the um, the predicted y value, right? This is the predicted value. Where when I talk about just y, that is the um, observed value, right? So I like to use y hat to separate those so I know what I'm talking about, right? Um, so another term here, it says where y hat is the predicted value, right? So that's another term that you learned uh, from reading this section, right? Um, and then, uh, so B1 is the slope, as I pointed out, and B B0 is the y-intercept, right? B0. And that's how these can be calculated, right? But again, don't be scared off by those. Um, I just want to show you that it's not some mystery, right, how those are calculated. So if we go on to the next slide, um, so this is just something that I want to spend a moment talking about. We're going to talk about it again in the next section, but... I thought um, introducing the idea here and then talking about it a little, a little more in the next section would probably be a good idea. Um, so we want to talk about um, what we call inter interpolation and extrapolation, right? So we, we, may, we may have a least squares line or regression line. We use this to make predictions, right? But we, there's some things we have to be careful of. Making predictions using x values between the observed value, we call this interpolation. Interpolation. And then making predictions using x values beyond the observed value is called, we call this extrapolation. Right? So the general idea is if I have a scatter plot, right, so let's say here's my scatter plot. Right, so maybe my x variable is. Um, I don't know, hours spent studying for the midterm. And over here is the midterm grade. Right? So if I fit a linear trend line to this, right? Right, so just eyeballing it. Right, so you can imagine there's a linear trend line, something like this. Then um if 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 I use this line to make predictions anywhere so let me let me draw a line here right so if you notice this is my like minimum value I have right this value here so I have no data to the left of this and over here this is kind of like my my highest um, x value right here so if, if I'm using the line to predict anything in this yellow, this is called interpolation, right? We're making predictions using x values between our observed values, right? So all of these blue dots are observed values. If I'm picking something inside of here, it's interpolation. But if I'm using my um, regression line to predict values anywhere to the left or to the right of where my data is, right? Oops, went over a little bit there, right? So anywhere where this green is, right? Any place to the right, this is called uh, extrapolation, right? If we go to the left or to the right of our data, right? So something we have to keep in mind here is that extrapolation may produce unrealistic forecasts, right? So for example, let's say that this student here got 100 on the test, right? So if we follow over here, this is a hundred on the test. So, I mean, I guess it could be possible to get over a hundred um, on the test, but let's say there was no extra credit, right? A hundred is the max, right? Then if I use this regression line, eventually over here, right, I'm gonna have data points that are above 100, right? So like, if we match this over, this Y value would be over 100. Maybe, maybe let's say it's 120, right? So 120 is not possible, so this line could forecast values that are outside um, of of our un, of our realistic values, right? So that's that's one thing we have to keep in mind, right? Right. So for now, I'm just happy if you know what um, 
extrapolation and interpolation is, right? Understanding what that means. And then, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna look through this a little a little more in a moment, right? So then um, here I just have residuals, right? So residuals I talked about before. This is the difference between the um, the observed value with the predicted, right? So the observed value is a given value for y, right? That's what what we were given. So another way to write this is that the residual is equal to um, the observed minus the predicted, right? All right. So then the next slide. I just wanted to spend a moment um, trying to uh, interpret the intercept and, and the slope of of this equation. Right. And we're going to do some more um, e examples of this. And this is more of a generic um, a generic equation because we don't know what x and y are. So I want to um, go through it more generically, and then we're going to apply this to to more problem so we can be more specific in our interpretation, right? So here is my um, linear trend line, right? And remember, it's a line, so l l lines are, we can put them in slope-intercept form, right? Which hopefully you've seen with and feel very comfortable with, right? Y equals mx plus b, right? So remember that m, this is my slope, and this uh, b is my y-intercept, right? So whatever value is being multiplied by x is my slope. So that's how I know that this is. So I, if you want to, I can swap the order of the 3x and 2 term, right? Uh, that's the commutative property of addition, right? It doesn't matter what order we add in. So if I swap those two, it, it matches exactly with this if you prefer, right? So then you can easily see that this is my slope, right? m equals 3, and this is my y-intercept, b equals uh, 2, right? So if you'd like, you could use m and b. Or if you use the variables that I presented before, right? Remember we used b1, b sub 1 for slope, and b sub 0, b naught for um, for y-intercept, right? So that's from my regression line. So I w first thing I want to do is interpret the the intercept, right? So remember what it means for an intercept, right? So here is my scatter plot, right? Then we have this regression line, right? That has the equation y y hat equals three x plus two, right? So this is my intercept, and so this point is the is my intercept, which is the point uh, zero two, right? So remember, y intercept your x value is always zero, right? Because so if you want to be on the y axis, you don't want to be moved move to the left or right of the y-axis at all, right? So the x value has to be 0, right? So so in other words, when x is 0, we get that y hat equals 2, right? So thinking along that, now we can try to interpret it, right? So what I can say is I can say the mean value of y, y hat, um, Well, let's just say y, the mean value of y, right? That's what I meant. So, so, so y hat is the mean value of y. So we're going to say the mean value of y um, when x equals zero is called the intercept. And, and then, so now if we want to look at interpreting the slope, right, so I want to interpret the slope as 3, right, or we use b1 as 3, right, either way, whatever you feel more comfortable with. So we can interpret this, right? And remember, slope is your change in y over your change in x, right, rise over run, or you've probably seen it like this a lot, right, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right, so if you remember right, when I have a line, right, and I have two points, then you can make like a right triangle between those two points, right? 
And so this distance is my chain in, change in y or my run, and this distance is my change in x, right? So slope is just the ratio of your, your vertical change over your horizontal change, right? So keeping that in mind, now we can try to interpret the slope, right? So we could say something like um, when x increases by 1, the change uh, in y is called the slope, right? So you could uh, say something like that, right? That's perfectly fine. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to put this in more applications and look at some other variations of how you can say this, right? Um, but all, all the ways are, are correct. So looking at this next example, I put this in context. Um, so I have some data looking at the age of a car, so how old a car is, um, and that's in years, right? And then um, my my y variable is price in hundreds of dollars, right? So for example, this first data set, right? What this means is that we have a car that's five years old, and it costs um, eighty five hundred dollars, right? So eight thousand five hundred dollars right so that information goes with this data set right so how I code that is five comma eighty five right that's my x comma y right my ordered pair so I want to show you how we can put this into um, into R and create a scatter plot and then also get the equation the line of best fit right so I'm going to show you how to do this on the calculator on Excel and on R right with this data set Right, because again, um, we don't we don't necessarily want to do this with um, by hand, right? All right. So let me open up R. Make the text bigger for you. All right. So let's see. I, so since I'm going to be using this data in Excel and in R, um, I think what I'm going to do is just upload the, the data into Excel first, right? So let me open up Excel. All right. And you can type this along with me. So just looking at... looking at the PowerPoint slides, right? So you probably have those printed out, so it would be a good idea to follow, follow along. So I'm just going to call this um, age and price, right? To make it simple for R to talk about. So we have, um, we have 5, 4, 5, 4, 6, 5, 5, 5, right? Three fives, and then 6, 6, 2, 7, 7. Right? And then for the ages, we have 85, 103, 70, um, 82, 89, 98, 66, 95, 169, 70, and 48. Right? So let me just do a quick check, make sure I didn't make any typos. 546, 555, 66277, and then 85, 103, 70, 82, 89, 98, 66, 95, 169, 70, 48, right? Good. So it looks like this data set is in. So one thing I like to do is click up here where it, so it highlights everything. And I like to make my data centered, right, just to make it, I don't know, nice. Um, and then what we need to do is file, and then we need to save it. So I'm going to save it to my desktop. Um, and then I'm just going to call this, um, how about car price, right? And remember when we work with R, we need to save this as a CSV format, right? So this option here, CSV comma delimited, right? So hit save. 
and it, it's going to say, you know, do you want this format? And you just say yes, right? So I have it saved on my desktop and named car price, right? And notice how the, the name is. It's all lowercase with the space in between. So, you, so we have to remember that when we upload this in R. So if I go back to R, then remember if I'm uploading an um, Excel document, the first thing I need to do is set up my working directory. So I would say get working directory. So where are you currently working? And then um, I want to set my working directory. And then if you'd like, you could just copy this. So select this and copy and then paste. And then instead of in my documents, I want to find this in my desktop, right? So I would recommend working on your desktop also, but um, I said before you can work in documents. That's perfectly fine, right? So hit enter, right? Nothing is good here, right? As long as it's not screaming at you. So now what I'd like to do is tell Excel that I want my data to be, and then I do the read.csv format. And then um, my, my, let's see, my Excel name was, I called it car price. So car price.csv. Right? So nothing is good here. So now I need to attach the data. Right? So now, now Excel knows where my Excel file is, and I told Excel by attaching it that this is what I want to work with. Right? I'm really sure. Right? So then now um, what I can do is I can do names of data. And again, this will tell me all of my variables, right? So remember when we set this up in Excel, each row goes with um, one person, right? So like this goes with one car. This is like everything on this row, no matter how many variables you had up here, would, would go with this one car, right? So I have a car that's five years um, old and costs $8,200. So the so the the names at the top these are my variables, right? So then I showed you before how you can create a scatter plot, right? So let's um, remember how to do that. So to do that, you'd want to use the plot command. So plot, and then you type in the um, <coughs> type in the x value, right? Which would be age, comma, and then the y value, which is the price, right? So those are the variables I use, age and price. And then you can also add some things in, like if you want a title, right? So I showed you before, I could you know, do color equals, inside of quotes, I could put a color that I want my data points to be, right? So maybe I want them to be, um, I don't know, purple, right? Then it'll graph purple, right? Or if you want the blue, whatever. I'm actually, not going to use the color feature um, on this, All right? So I'm just going to leave that plain. Uh, but then, if you want to add a title, a main title, then the command is main equals, and then inside of quotes, you you put the um, whatever title you want, right? So I'll just put um, age versus price of cars, right? And then we need to close the parentheses, and then you can hit enter, right? And here's my scatter plot, right? So if we look at this, um, you know, you could argue that this is linear, right? There's nothing to say that this isn't linear, right? If I do length of age, right, this will tell me how many items I have in age. So we have 11 cars, right? So just something to keep in mind, you know, we only have 11 data points. Oops. You grab this back, right? So I only have 11 data points, so this is possible it's not linear, but again, I pointed out before, you know, for ease of calculation, typically we use small data sets, you know, um, when we're teaching a concept. And then, um, you know, we'll get to using full-blown examples so you can see what it looks like, you know, if, if you're doing this uh, in the real world, right? So now, um, what I can do is let's see I X out of my scatter plot so actually I want my scatter plot back up so let me go back up to this so just push the up arrow and I grab my plot back and it should be should be here right where'd it go here it is is hiding. Oops. Um, cancel. 
We want this. Oops, not that one. Must be the other one. It's hiding down here. There. Right. So there's my scatter plot, right? So now what I want to do is type in the command um, a b um, well actually the first thing I want to do is I want to create the equation of my line right so to get that right we can hit fit equal so I'm calling this the fit the line of best fit right and then use the linear um, linear model command lm and then um, you open up parentheses and what you do is you do your y value which is price and then tilde your x value right which is age so if I do this right then I told um, R that if I when I use fit that's what I'm talking about I'm talking about this linear model um, between price and age so now if I do what's the summary command of fit this will give me a bunch of information about um, about my linear model right so this will come up with a lot of things that um, that that we won't get to but there are two things that you want to focus on and that's these two numbers right here right so kind of ignore everything else except for these two things right so what this does is this tells you your intercept right and this is your slope right so th we need those two values right so again this top number this tells me my um, y intercept and this tells me my slope right so that's one one way to find that and then now um, oops make this a little smaller there you go alright so now what I would like to do is add this linear trend line right and let me just type this right so I'm gonna hit a number sign first so what the number sign does is tell R that I'm not typing any codes I just want to type some notes to myself right so basically what we found is that um, the the linear model right that we have would be um, let's see we have price equals negative uh, 20 right that's the slope negative 20.26 that's the slope times the age of the car plus um, the intercept which is 195.47 right so this is the equation that that can be used to estimate um, values within our data set right so that's our line of best fit or our regression line right we that's how we found it using R so now let's say I would like to put this line on onto my scatter plot right to do this we do use the AB line command so you do AB line and then you type in LM and then you'll type in um, price tilde age right? and then I'm going to type in COL equals so I, I'm going to tell R to make this line red right so now when I hit this and if I go back to my scatter plot that I had over here um, you'll notice this is the line graphed on top of of my scatter plot, right? So I wanted it in red just to make it more apparent, um, make make it easier to know, to see the difference, right? So there's my red line. That's my line of best fit, and each of these circles are my data points, right? So that's how we can do that um, in R, right? And remember to get the um, to get find the R, right? The Oops. To find the correlation coefficient, right? R. Remember to find that we type in C O R, and then you can type in the X, which is um, age, comma the price, right? Um, and actually, the order doesn't matter, right? The correlation is the same. But if I hit enter, um, there's my my correlation, right? So this is a pretty strong negative linear correlation, right? So don't forget how to do that, right? So that's just helpful. To, in working with this, right? 
So now let me show you how to do this um, in Excel, right? So let me go back to my Excel file, right? Um, so to do this in Excel, we can highlight um, all of our data, and then I can go to Insert tab, and then um, this button here will, will do a scatter plot, right? So let me pick this for scatter plot. You can change the title up here if you would like, right? So we did age versus price of cars, right, earlier. So then now I can go up here to add chart element, and I can go to trend line, right? So if I go to trend line and go to linear, then there is my linear trend line, right? And if I double click on that, it'll pop up some options here on the right, right? So, um... So what I like to do is we can say display the equation on the chart and you can make this text bigger if you'd like. Right? But that that's the equation for this line, right? And that's exactly what we got earlier from R, right? If I remember right. Um 195.43 yep. That's exactly it, right? So we're getting the same the same equation, right? So then, um, how to do this in your calculator, right? So let me open up my calculator. So remember, what we do is you have to go to um, to Stat and go to Edit, and then we would need to type in um, type in our values. So let me show you uh, a shortcut, right? If you put your cursor on the list and you hit delete and then the down arrow um, whoops maybe it's clear clear and then the down arrow it, it yeah it clears that whole list right so that's kind of a shortcut way you can do right um, let's see I got rid of L1 so let me put this back so we hit clear and then the down arrow and that goes that goes away Right. All right. So now what I need to do is hit my x values in in L2, and I can put my y values in L3. Right. Um. Well. I forget how to add L1 back in. Um, oh well, right? So we're just going to remember X is in L2 and Y is in L3, right? So if you put X in L1 and Y in L2, that's perfectly fine, right? It doesn't make a difference. So L2, I'll have my X values in, which was 5, 4, 6. So 5, 4, 6, and then 3 fives, right? 1, 2, 3 fives, 1, 2, 3, and then 2 sixes. And then a two, and then two sevens. And then our prices, we have 85, 103, 70 and then lastly 48 right so then now if I go to um, I'm gonna go second quit to go back to the home page and then um, I will go to the stat menu again right and then go over to calculate and then go down to option 8 right is what we used before line lin regular a plus BX I hit that and then remember though at least for me my X values were in um, L2. So I need to tell L2 here and my Y list was in L3, right? So if you type, you know, you have, have to change those depending on how you type that in. And then I'm going to go down to calculate. And then here, the, these, so, so the B value is my slope, right? And the A value is my Y intercept because that's how the equation is set up. And R is my co co correlation coefficient, right? So that's listed there. And then R squared, we're going to talk about what that is um, very soon, right? So, um, so that that'll be coming, right? 
And if you noticed um, here with this in Excel, when I double clicked and I had um, when I check mark this display equation on chart, there's there was also this line to say display r squared value um, on the chart as well, right? So again, we'll get to that. All right. So going back to our notes. So now I have a slide on the regression line, right? So remember, this is just a tool for making predictions about future observed values, right? So it can be helpful for us um, to make some predictions. Um, and also to see what's going on, right? Um, and it always has this form, y equals a plus bx, where a is the y-intercept and b is the slope, right? That's just the general equation for a line. Um, and as I stated, we're going to use technology, right? What, what? to generate this. So here's um, an, another example where um, the independent variable right, is home runs and the RBIs is the Y variable, right, the dependent variable. So also remember that we used um, some different um, terms for this, right? So remember that home runs this is my independent variable. Right? Which is also called the predicted value. Or not not the predicted value. Right. Excuse me, it's the predictor variable, right? Predictor. Right? So we're using x to predict y. So we call it the predictor variable. So then this, the, the y-axis, right, this is the dependent variable, right, so y depends on x, right, um, and we refer to this as the predicted that variable. So we can call it the predicted variable or the, sometimes it's called the response variable. Um, and if you need to refresh yourself on this, right, this was in page 163 in the reading, right? So here we have a scatter plot, and this red line, right, this red line, this is my regression line, right, or my line of best fit, my least squares line, right, we went over that regression line. So we can use this line to predict um, how X and Y are working together, right? So the scatter plot shows a fairly strong positive linear trend, right? We have a fairly strong positive linear trend. So to know how strong, remember we would calculate the co um, the correlation coefficient, right? R. So we could figure that out, right? Using technology, and I've shown you how to do that, right? Um, but we're told here the regression line has an equation has a slope of 2.16 and a y-intercept of 30.46. So this positive linear trend indicates that players who hit more home runs tend to have more RBIs, right? Which makes sense, right? So what we're saying is like this value up here as as X as X increases, so does Y, right? That's what a positive linear trend does, right? So then this is another example where we have a negative linear trend, right? So we have the value of dollars um, for a car and the age, right? So this is value versus age of a car. So as as x increases, right, as the age increases, y goes down, right? You can see that trend as we go along. So here is the regression equation for this, right? We have a predicted value equals 21,375 minus 1215 times the age, right? So this would be the slope, negative 1215, and this is the y-intercept. So here is an example where we're using the regression line, so or regression equation, right? So here's the equation of the regression line, right, from the last one. And it says use the regression equation to predict the value of a car that is 12 years old, right? So what that means is that age is 12. So if I let age, my variable here, this be 12, then I just fill it in, right? So as I have here. So if we um, plug this in and, and do some simplification, we get the predicted value equals $6,795, right? So we would expect an age of 12 to be this, this um, 
be worth this value, right? It's so like if I go back up here, right? What we're looking for is 12 would be you know somewhere around here. Whoops, jump down didn't mean to do that. So 12 is here. If I follow this up, then this y value matches up to um, to be about what we found, right? So then over here, this would match up, and we found the age to be 67.95, right? So this is 67.95, right? So that's the general idea of what we did, right? We we took the x value, followed it up, and what value is that on the equation? So now we're saying finding the regression equation, right? So to find the regression equation again, we're going to use technology, right? And in fact, you follow the same steps with the, um, at, le at least on the calculators, finding the correlation coefficient, right? So you probably noticed that it was just the same steps. That gave us um, both things. All right, so I have another example to look at. So here's another table of heights and weights for six women, right? And we actually looked at the same data in the last um, lecture. So we have height and weight of, of six women, right? Um, so before, we, we already knew that we had a linear trend, right? So again, don't forget, before you, you even started working with this data, the first thing that you want to do is create a scatter plot and see if you have any type of linear trend. If you do not have a linear trend, it does not make sense to make a line of best fit or to find the correlation of coefficient, right? We talked about that before. So always start there. Get a picture. Does my data look linear, right? So then um, here is we can plug that data in and find the equation, right? Doing the steps I followed, I, I showed you follow along. Uh, so here's the equation that that you would get, right? So we we can use this equation then if we want to estimate, well, how much would a woman weigh if she was 65 inches tall, right? So height is in inches here. Right, so we don't have to do any conversions. I can just plug in 65 in for height, and this is what we would end up getting. Right, um, and that's a typo, right? You can't weigh inches. So let me come up here. Um, doesn't say. I, I believe this was in pounds, right? So I apologize for that. So get rid of inches. This should be like pounds. So the weight of the woman was 144.07 pounds, right? So then here are some notes about regression equation, right? So with the regression equation, the order matters. If I do swap x and y, my equation will change, right? I'll get a different equation, right? Um, so as we found before, the correlation doesn't change, right? So with this, the r value, the correlation coefficient doesn't change but the linear equation does change right so that's something to keep important and then here I just have notes so we use the x variable to make predictions about the y variable so the x variable is called the explanatory or predictor variable right so those are different terms we can use for that um, and of course we also call it the independent variable right that's terms that you should have heard before Right when you took just uh, like a beginning or basic algebra class, right? And then here the y variable is a response or a predicted variable, right? So we use the, we can use those terms for y, and that's also called the dependent variable. So here's another example. So what I did is I just flip, um, use the same data, and we're gonna flip flop it, uh, the x and the y, right? So this time I'm gonna let weight be the x and height be the y, right? So if you do this, um, we we will get um, so dependent variable right is the y, and independent variable is the x right. So I flip flip those around, and this this is the equation that you would get right. So notice it's a different equation than we had before, but my r value is still the same right. So if you were to plug that in, this is still the same as before, right? So it says, note the R correlation coefficient remains the same. However, the regression equation is different from our previous results, right? 
And then here, so interpreting the slope of the regression line, so remember, slope tells us how much the y variable changes when the x variable is increased by 1, right? So we looked at that example like that. Um, and a slope close to 0 means there's no linear relationship between x and y, right? So that's just something to note. <clears throat> so here we have our equation. We want to interpret the slope, right? So this is just another interpretation. So here are two, two interpretations. So we can say for every additional inch in height, the weight tends to increase by 9.03 pounds. And then here, every increase of one inch in height is associated with an increase in weight of 9.03 pounds, right? So remember, slope is change in y over change in x, right? Or in this case, my slope is my change in my uh, weight per change in x, or per change in x, which is height, right, for this equation. So this would be height. All right, so that's, that's how we can come up with these equations, right? If I have 9.03 as my slope, if I put that over 1, right, that's why we're talking about um, every inch of height, right? One unit of height increases by 9.03 pounds, right, because this is weight over height. And then here's an example into bring the slope. So it says in a, a previous example on the association between age of a car and value of a car, right? So this was a couple of slides ago. I, I know I did two data sets with cars, right? So one was the cost of a car with age, and, and then the, the other, this is, this is a little different. This is the value, right? Predicted value of a car with age. So um, the data is a little different. So here's, here's that equation that we had previously. So we can interpret the slope. Right? So again, here are two ways to write that. Right? So then now I have a slide on interpreting the y-intercept of regression equation. Right? So remember, the y-intercept is the predicted value when x is 0. Right? And the y-intercept is meaningful only if it makes sense for x to be equal to y. Right? It may not make sense for x to equal 0. Right? So for example, um, up here, let's see, when we're talking about weight and height, the x value of 0 here would mean a height of 0. So it doesn't make sense to talk about a woman's weight when she is 0 inches tall, right? So that's just one example, right? So this, it doesn't always make sense for this, right, when we apply this into the real world. So then here's an example for interpreting the y-intercept, y right? So here's my equation, right? My y-intercept is this value, right? The 21,375. So here's a way we can interpret it, right? And remember, only interpret it if appropriate, right? So here what we're saying is it is the predicted value when x is 0, so age is 0. So in other words, when the car is new, its value is 21,375, right? So when it's brand new, that's the cost of it for, for like that example. And then here's another um, example. So we have this equation earlier, right? So interpret the y-intercept. So here's the interpretation. It says it is predicted value for the weight if x is 0. Um, so as I put here, it is impossible to weigh negative 44, uh, 442 pounds, right? And it's also impossible for a woman to be 0 inches tall. So this y-intercept is meaningless, right? Because this is my y-intercept value. And so this this tells me the point 0, comma negative 442.882, right? Where this is the height, right? And this is the weight. So actually, neither one of these values makes sense, right? We can't be negative weight, and I can't have a height of 0. It, it doesn't make sense. So this would be an example of extrapolation like we talked about, right? Right. So remember, extrapolation can give us unrealistic values, right? So an unrealistic value is negative weight, for example. All right. All right, so that's all I have for this section. That should be um, a lot of information to get you through the homework. Make sure you email me if you have any questions.